Hello, this is Dylan from Stupid Raisins, and today we're going to recreate the titles from the Assassin's Creed movie. Here's an example. This is from the trailer. And then this is what we'll make. Alright, first thing you do is add a generator. A solid black one is fine. Then we're going to add some titles. Go to 3D and select custom. And change it to about seven seconds. Change the text to assassins and use a dollar sign for the cool S. Then change the font to the assassins font that you installed. There we go. We're also going to drag this over here and put it below it. We can use it as an example, as a reference image to line things up. Make the text bigger. That's about right. And we're going to spread it out just a little bit. Go down to the 3D text section and make a few changes there. We're going to make it a little thicker. And we want it to be a little heavier there. There we go. Change this to round. And... Set the front edge size to 1. And inside corners to round. For the lighting, turn on the self shadows and then open up the environment. We're going to change this to softbox above. And we're going to go down here to the material. And set up the substance. We're going to change it to metal, then we're going to select chrome, then we're going to add a layer above it, scratches. Scratches four, and we don't want them so harsh, so we're going to take that down to about 20%. Good. Now change the material from single to multiple, and then link the front edge, back edge, and back to front. Now go to side, and we're going to add a little bit of red to it. If you look in the trailer, as you, as you can see as it moves in, there's a little bit of red that kind of hits the sides from uh, some sort of source here, something making it red. We're going to add that red. Go to Layer, Paint, Reflective Paint, and select Custom, and do a nice red color. I'm going to turn things down a little bit. About 75 there, bring this down. Uh, the opacity we're going to bring way down to about 1.5%. And the shininess down as well. Alright. Now go back up to the text tab here. And put the spread at 100. This is how we're going to animate it. Let's do decelerate. And then move in is going to zoom down. And it's going to rotate in from the left. And then we'll leave all this as none. We don't want to do an animation out. We're going to fade out. So if you look at the trailer... The texts come in, they rotate, and they zoom by the camera. And this gives us a similar, similar look to it. All right, duplicate that and put it below it. This will be our Creed layer. Go to the text and type Creed. And bring it down into that general area. I'm going to space it out a little bit and then... Bring the lettering down. There we go. Alright, so I'm settling on about 11 on the tracking there. It doesn't have to be exact. We're getting really close, and that looks good. Go to the 3D text and crank up the weight. And then in lighting, come down here to rotation and rotate the Z along the Z axis like that. There we go. It kind of lights that up a little bit more. All right, that looks good. So it comes zooming in and rotating. Great. Let's do the symbol in the background. Duplicate Creed, put it at the back. Go to your text field and type a question mark. And that'll make the symbol. You can reset the tracking to... 0%, and then we're just going to move this, make this bigger, 
and move it into position. Looks good, might be a little big. There we go. All right, go to the 3D text section. We're gonna make a few changes here. Set the weight to zero, and then the front edge to bevel. Then for front edge size, change this to like a 65 and a 55. There we go, now we've got some nice sharp angles there on this symbol. I just noticed that I messed up one of the settings here. So go back to Creed, and the edge size should, size should be one. Do that for Creed and Assassin. Front edge size to one, there we go. That looks a little better on the text, okay. Go to the question mark or the symbol and go to your text tab. And we're not gonna animate this at all, so set everything to none. You can see in the trailer that it just kind of fades in, it's already there. And then the text comes over it. Okay, go back to the text section here. And let's link all of these other sides to this middle one with the red reflective paint on it. And then let's just go ahead and set it to single. And we're going to turn up the face opacity. You can see in the trailer here that there's some red on it. Mostly a reflection of the flare, I think, but also it might have some yucky blood on it. So let's turn that up, the face opacity up a little bit to right about there, about an 8. And then you can play with these two to find anything you might like, find the look you, you want. All right, that looks good. Let's also mess with the rotation a little bit on the symbol. We can kind of move it around to get a look we want. I like that with a little bit of the dark here on the side and then light there and the, then kind of a reflection there in the center. All right. Okay, what's next? Let's work on this smoke in the background. Grab your smoke elements that you downloaded and put them into the timeline. Let's see where are mine. Here we go. We're going to put it below the question mark there. Now I'm going to rotate it completely so that the smoke is moving from right to left. I'm going to use the transform tool now to move it over this way. And I'm going to put it kind of at an angle like so. There we go. I'm going to set the blend mode to add. That way we can see, see things below it. I'm going to turn off the trailer example for right now so that we have a better idea as to what we're doing. All right, set the opacity to about 20%. A little bit darker, that looks good. Now let's duplicate that. And then let's move it over here to the other side. And then let's, using the T, the trim tool, or let's move it in time so that we don't have the same smoke happening in both places. That looks pretty good. I think it moves a little too fast. So select them and change it to about 80%. All right, select those. Make a compound clip. Add a color board to it by pressing Alt-E. And just add a little bit of green not much. There we go. That looks good. All right, let's take a look at the trailer and see what else we need to add. We've got the smoke in there. We've got the symbols. We've got the letters coming in. Let's add that flare. All right, this will be our main flare. Let's add that above the text and make that blend mode add as well. And we're going to scale this down just a little bit. If I hold down shift while I while I change the size, then it scales it proportionately. There we go. And we're going to put that right right there at the bottom of the A. Let's use this other one as well to add a little more flavor. Same thing. Set the blend mode to add. And I want this under that flare. And then I need to move it around to get the center right there. There we go. You'll notice in the trailer that there is a flare over here on the left-hand side coming from off-screen across the symbol and across the letters. So let's create that as well. Select this uh, 16 and duplicate it, put it up above. And then let's move it over to the side and we're gonna scale it up real big so that we can use this little streak here. 
That might be too big, let's see. Yeah, I'm thinking a little too big. Let's go down to like a 300. There we go, that looks a little better. And we'll just put that off to the side there. You can see it on the left. Let's work on the timing of this main flare here that goes above the A. Select the two flares and make a compound group out of it. And then change the blend mode of that compound group to add so we can see below it. Let's turn this off. Actually, real quick, let's look and see when that flare comes on. Just right as it's settling into place, it kind of flares up. So we'll do that too, just as our letters are kind of coming in. Right as the A is settling into place right about there, let's have the flare fade in. So I'm going to grab my fade in and out tool effect and just drag it on there. And I'm going to move it in time so that it starts right about there. There we go. That starts to glow right as they settle into place. All right, excellent. Now, a flare, you'll notice in this one, it gets bigger and smaller and then it kind of grows a little tiny bit. It pulses a little bit, you know what I mean? So, I made this little opacity wriggle effect that we can just drag on there, and that will change the opacity value over time. So I'm going to tell it to subtract 25%, up to 25% of the opacity uh, as the clip plays. And I'm going to turn the noise down just a little bit, and we'll kind of randomize the seed a little. We turn that off, and watch. You'll see it kind of pulse a little bit, change just a little bit. All right, that looks good. We're going to do the same with this side flare. So copy the main flares, then shift command paste, and just, sec just select the opacity effect and press paste. Then go in and uh, change the random seed so that it, it does something a little bit different. You know, I think that flare should come in a little bit earlier, a few frames earlier. I'm going to move it forward about five frames. There we go, that looks better. Maybe even a couple more frames. There we go. And then it starts to glow right as it's settling in. All right, that looks good. Now, one thing we need to work on is when these letters are really close to the camera, like right here, we can see them really well. We can see them crisply. They need to be out of focus as they come by the camera. So let's add a blur filter to that. Select them, make them a compound clip. Come over here to your effects and search for Blur. Uh, I search for Gaussian Blur. There we go. Drag that onto the titles. Now you'll see it's blurred. It's out of focus. Let's change it. Take it down to about a 30. And then at the beginning, put a keyframe. And then just as it's settling into place, just when it's getting as far away from the camera as possible, right about there, we'll put another keyframe and set the value to zero. Let's take a look at that. Comes in blurry and then it becomes clear. All right, that looks good. Let's take a look at what else we need to do in the trailer here. Text comes in, turns, flare comes on, smoke looks good. That looks really good. The only thing we need to do next, the next thing we need to do is, is make it so that these fade on. Let's make the smoke symbol and side flare fade on first, then the letters come on. All right. Let's move these, we're going to move these 30 frames later. Then we're going to put a fade in and out on these three. We'll fade in over 20. Let's turn the fade out to zero. Copy that and then select these two layers or clips and press shift command V to paste effects and just select the fade in and out. All right, that way that's the smoke and the symbol fade in, and then the letters come on, come into play. There we go. That looks good. All right, we need to make this a little bit longer to match up with that. That looks good. All right, let's trim these things up to all match the text time. Good. Let's move this out of the way. We don't quite need that. And let's trim up our background as well.
Next step is to add some letterbox on this. Let's select all those, make a compound clip, come over here. Actually, before we do that, get your fade effect, drop that on there, and then letterbox. Let's see, letterbox, set that to 2.35 to 1. Uh, set the fade in time to zero and then fade out to 20. That way everything fades out together at the end. Oh, that looks good. All right, let's take a look at it where we're at right now. That looks awesome. All right, next thing we need to do is add some sounds. Let's put a little gap at the beginning here and change the duration to just one second. Let's use some sound effects. Let's start with this uh, booming reverse here. I'm going to put that at the very beginning and I'm going to set it up so that we can see the audio waveforms a little bit. I'm going to pull that fade out way over here. Next we'll use this crash metal. These are all sounds that you can find in Final Cut. They come with it. You just go over here to the sound section, sound effects, and you can just search the names like crash metal. And then we're going to add this sword impact and we want this to happen right as the letters are coming past, right about there. That looks good. And then this wind is going to be kind of be our background, background sound. And we want it to, to fade out as well, so we're going to pull that fade over. Let's clean this up a little bit, fade it out. All right, let's see how that's, let's see how it looks and how it sounds. Okay, this drops off right here, and then a split second later we have this large hit and it just doesn't sound good, so let's trim this this uh, gap up so that this drops off and the hit happen at the same time. Much better. I think the sword impact is happening too early. Let's take a look. That looks amazing. All right. If you don't want to go through all that trouble to make it, or you don't have the time, you can always download this as a free template from my website at stupidraisins.com. Thanks, guys.